Hello everybody, welcome to your next Allegro 5 tutorial. Um, I'm sorry this was supposed to come like uh, yesterday I believe or a few days ago but I misplaced my mic and I just found it just now so I decided to go on and make this video for you guys right now. Um, so let's get started. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to be learning about keyboard events and keyboard what keyboard events allow you to do is to allow you to use the keyboard to interact with your game. Um, when making p computer games, the keyboards can be can be used to do a lot. It can be used to type in your name for a user. It can be used to move the player across the screen, especially in 2D games. Um, 2D and 3D also with W, A, S, and D and the uh, arrow keys. And you can use different keys to do certain things. So the keyboard is very important in PC-based games. So I'm going to be teaching you how to use the keyboard in Allegro 5. Um, if you if you're coming from a um SFML or something like that that uses a, an event system then this this should be fairly easy for you to learn. So in this tutorial we have um everything in, um included from last tutorial. Have our defines. Um, we create a display and <coughs> sorry. Um, we want to install our keyboards so that we use it. So much like the modules to to do the add-ons we do al underscore inst install underscore keyboard to install the keyboard to make sure that um, the compiler knows that we're using the keyboard so one thing new you see here is allegro event underscore q <coughs> and um, the name we've given it is event underscore q and is equal to al underscore create underscore event underscore q now if you know what a q is basically what what we're doing is we're creating a basically a lineup. So the way events work is it's first it's um whatever you pressed whatever buttons you press it puts it in basically a lineup, right? So uh say I click um the keys Q W E R T Y. So say I spell QWERTY, right? So what it would do is it will execute what happens when you click Q, execute what you um when you click W, execute what happens when you click E, execute what happens when you click R, so on and so forth. So it basically puts it in a queue or a line format and whichever button you put in, um you, whatever buttons you press puts it in a lineup and executes it in an order. So after we create our event queue, we have to actually um, register an event source. And what what how we do this? We put al underscore register underscore event underscore source. Now the first one asks for our event queue which we've created, and then we in our next one we're going to be stating what we're going to be storing into our queue or the source for our queue. So. Um, what we're going to be storing in our queue. So in this case, we're getting keyboard events, right? So what we do is we put al underscore get underscore keyboard underscore event underscore source and do not forget the parentheses. Now I know the a lot of the functions are long and they're hard to get used to, but after a while it'll become second nature. So give yourself some time. So right here, um, now we're going to be creating uh, what is known as the game loop. And what the game loop is is that a game loop is is um a while loop. What we're gonna be creating is a continuous loop that will loop through. It goes through three. It goes through two phases um, during the game loop. It goes through the update phase and the draw phase. The update updates all the anim elements in the game, such as the player's position. It updates the enemy's position, health, whatever. And the draw phase is what draws everything to the screen. So say you move five pixels to the right, that would happen in the update, and in the draw, um, in the draw function, the draw function would actually visually show the player moving five spaces to the right. So um, more will be talked about on, <coughs> um, on game loops, but don't worry about it right now. So we have a bool done is equal to false and in our while loop that's what we're going to be using for a game loop and so basically when if the game is not done then we're going to continue looping the game loop and x and y that's going to be our player's position and move speed is going to be the speed that the player moves at and do not worry about this right now 
don't worry about this. This is something a test I was testing for. So, um, and don't worry. When I put the on the website, this won't be in the source code to distract you. So, anyways, we have in our while in our game loop, we we have to create an event. So we created our event queue. We registered what's in our event queue, but we never actually created an event. We create an event by doing Allegro underscore event and we name it. So we're going to name it events. Now, uh, what this does right here is it does AL underscore weight underscore for event, um, which event queue and the actual event. So, and make sure you put the ampersand there because it's making a reg uh, reference to the event. So it's basically waiting until um, a key is pressed or waiting for something to happen right and then when you um, click something on your keyboard then something else it reacts to what you press on the keyboard so after something's pressed on your keyboard then it goes through this if statement right here so um there's there's a lot of things you can do with the event class so there's not a lot that I'm only showing you a limited amount of things you can do with events right now in this tutorial you're gonna be learning everything to do with events later but this is only a portion of it so right now we're doing events that's the event that we created right here events dot type is equal to allegro underscore event underscore key down so it is asking if um a key is being pressed if a key is down if a key is down then we want to create a switch statement and if you don't know what a switch is it's basically like an if statement if else statement but it's a different syntax and you can search it up on Google if you wish so what we're doing here we do events dot we put switch events dot keyboard dot key code so we're basically um, changing this into code that we can actually type so we're changing it to make it readable like this so then if we didn't do it like this then we would have to read it in a different way which I'll show you later in other tutorials but when we do switch events dot keyboard dot key code, we could say that um we're looking for allegro key down, which means the down arrow is pressed, up arrow is pressed, right arrow is pressed, and the left arrow is pressed. If we don't have this, then we probably have to put in numerical values or something else. And if it doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. So we're basically saying that if the down key is pressed, then we want to move the Y position down um farther down the screen. And remember, the farther you increase the Y variable, the lower down the screen it will go. It might seem opposite, but that's the way it works with Allegro. Um, if you press up, we move it towards the top of the screen. Uh, if we move, if we press the right button, we move it towards the right of the screen. And if you press the left button, we move it towards the left of the screen. And if you press the Escape key, we put Done is equal to True. So then that means that will exit the game loop, therefore ending the program. Now, uh, after all this update stuff, we need to actually draw everything to the screen. So, we need to put AL underscore draw underscore rectangle. We draw the X position, the Y position, X plus 20, Y plus 20 for the X2 and the Y2. We draw it at a left, that's the color we draw it for, and the width or the, the like the line, the line width or the line size. Then we do AL flip display to actually show it to our screen and then we clear we clear the screen to black so then it looks like an animation. The way animation works is it's an illusion. We draw it, then we clear the screen, draw it again, clear the screen, so on and so forth. So what this will do is it will create an illusion like it is moving across the screen. And after this we destroy the display and I believe we have to destroy the event too. Uh, destroy event queue and the name of the event queue. Uh, and then we have to destroy that and then return zero and everything should be fine. So when we run this program, let's see what we get. Uh, it's gonna take a little longer because of the screen recorder. Okay, so what you see on the screen right now is that at first you see nothing, but after you press a button, then it shows a box because it waits until an event happens and then it executes the rest of the program. 
So if you notice that some of you maybe if you hold it down it will do staggered movement. It'll be it'll be kind of staggered. It'll be it'll go right one stop and then keep on going right. And if you hold it down for each direction, it'll do the same thing, which is not what we want. And some of you might have to keep on like individually pressing up or clicking right or like this in order for your box to move. And I know that's not exactly how you'd want to do movement in your games. Movement in your games should be a smooth, um, little animation, smooth, um, smooth movement. But in order to do that, we need to interact with timers, and this tutorial isn't about timers. So once we learn about timers, then you'll learn how to move your players at a consistent rate. So um, this is it for this tutorial. You already know how to use the keyboard to do different things with the keyboard. Um, you're going to be learning new things in later tutorials. I'm just trying to teach you the basics of the keyboard right now. Then I'll teach you about timers and how to actually move your player at a constant speed. And once you learn that, then we'll learn advanced keyboard stuff and advanced stuff with timers, such as countdown timers, um, and game like total game time, how long the players have been playing, etc., etc. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and bye.